Welcome back to Watchmen. Oh, I'm pumped. Ooh, that was cool. Hooded justice. Never. I'm assuming no this is just the show, uh, the American Hero what Story show. Do. And because Director Hoover is not a depraved homosexual, so because love starting the episode and feeling personally attacked within the first How five minutes. That's where you lovely. Right now. Kind of figured that that wasn't um. What actually was going on? This extraordinary being. Oh shit! Here we go. She's getting trippy already. Starting. Yep. Okay, I'm already really enjoying this episode. This is pretty cool. I mean, it seems pretty apparent that he's the only black man here. You fucker. William Reeves, sir. I know on his mind, Lieutenant Battle. I've done the force because Lieutenant Battle? Sorry to hear that. Like the actual first black man on the force in New York? Cyclops. What? Congratulations, son. But where are the Cyclops? What the fuck was that? Be safe out there. I love how they cut between Will and Angela, like, doing these things. That's really cool. I'm not angry. Yes, you are. How could you not be? Whoa, hey. whoa. Hey yourself. You're a cop. Go arrest the fucker. So what, he's an anti-Semite? Or what was that? Who are you, boy? Officer Reeves, bitch. I seriously doubt that. Why do I get the feeling he's probably right? Sorry, Don't apologize to me, you apologize to him. Color me a little shocked that he actually is standing up for I'm so sorry. Will? Well, we got it from here? Yeah, sure, okay. What was that little Good work, Officer Reeves. hand symbol there? Does that have to do with the, the Cyclops thing? He did that like right on his forehead. Oh, that's so cool. Of course. Pardon me, Officer. Our justice system has always been a crack of shit, if you ask me. This has got to be like the most stylized episode of the show so far, and it's so cool. I thought you were cool, but that, that was clearly far too wishful of thinking there. Whoa, that's fucking dark as shit. Oh my god. What the fuck? Holy shit. Have to admit it's um fuck. It's a pretty bold choice to do this from a, like a first person perspective. Jesus. Like I said earlier, plenty to be angry about. Oh fuck. I just realized the noose around his neck. Did I not? fucking call it back in like the second or third episode that he is hooded justice did i not call that shit that puts the whole character in such a different light like that is brilliant honestly yes i was fucking right fuck it up dude i feel so vindicated that he's hooded justice i feel so vindicated <laughs> Like, don't get me wrong, I'm still, like, pretty fucked up that that's the origin of it all, okay. but... I'm angry. That's crazy. Why'd you put it on? The hood? I would bet it's kind of like... What's the name uh, Taking back the N-word in a way, like, use their own oh. fucked up Stop symbolism against them, oh. right? Tell me, what happened to the Dreamland Theater? Oh, that and that's why everyone thought he was a white guy. He actually, um, the piano. like, used makeup the to make himself look white under the hood. White citizens of Tulsa do. That's so fucked up. That he had to do that. And if you want to stay a hero, townsfolk gonna need to think one of their homes under it. That's really shitty, but, um, it's true. A neat mirror too to how she puts the black makeup over her eyes. I don't want to set the world on 
This is way cooler than I had anticipated the origin story of Hooded Justice to be, because I didn't even know we were going to get it. <laughs> of course they're clansmen. Let's go, every one of you about to die. You see all the sympathy I have in my face for them? Fuck you. Mesmerism? Of course you're the one who uh, has a part to play in this. Of course you do. Oh, shit. So sick, dude. Oh, and it's Angela's eyes. That's cool. You're not moving, but your eyes are wide open. It's kind of fucking freaky, Angela. <laughs> Officer Reeves, I'm Nelson Gardner. Oh! A pleasure to meet you. When he could have true companionship. Ooh, I'm detecting well, the sexual undertones there. I've overstayed my welcome. Something tells me they have a lot in common. Ooh, the little the little hand touch. <laughs> Good evening, Mrs. Reeves. Again, I'm. Again, I don't so support sorry. it. He's married, but I mean, I'm just saying. I noticed it. Yes. 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 Uh. All right. Well, that um uh, escalated a little quickly. Again, not a fan of adultery, but I would want me a piece of that as well. Tolerant as I am. Well, I like him a lot less than I thought up. I was going to. Wear the makeup. It's pretty odd though. Mm -hmm. Try something. Mm -hmm. The others can never see how beautiful you are. You know, as much as I want to like this, he's. What I'm gathering is he's a lot less tolerant than he thinks he is. But then I heard a cry, so I walked to it. What? It was a baby wrapped up in an American flag, so I picked her up. She's that baby? Are you serious? That's so sweet and so sad. Now that you got a team behind you, that's exactly um, what kind of crime that's kinda shitty talk. now. I thought that he genuinely would have like I super strength. And insidious conspiracy but at play in the city. Kinda now, just goes with the stereotype of black men being extra strong. That's boss, that's kinda shitty. You wouldn't let him talk about the the KKK having involvement in it? Like what the fuck, dude? See, this is what I'm talking about. He thinks he's a lot more tolerant than he actually is. A flickering light like we saw with Judd in the first episode. Oh, okay, so they're, they're fucking, like, hypnotizing people. <clears throat> Jeez Louise. I'll kill this motherfucker. Kill him. You jigs start to blend together after a while. <laughs> Fuck yes. And guess what? Every single one of you motherfuckers deserve it. Guess we're just gonna have to get personal. I'm trying to figure out where it all went wrong for Will because, to be honest, it kind of seems like a job well done right here. Then again, this hasn't helped him get rid of any of his anger, you know, it's... If anything, it's probably just made it worse. Oh, come on. Well, I guess that's where it went wrong, shit. Like, I understand her being upset about that and how he reacted to his kid and everything, but she did encourage him to do it. Oh, god damn it. So he really adopted the whole hypnosis technique? That's that's fucked up, but that's also really smart. You can hang yourself now. Damn. See, really wish they would have not done it as a strobing effect. That really hurts my eyes. Oh, oh, shit. Hi there. Welcome back. Shit. That was such a good episode. Not even close to what I anticipated that flashback to be like, or with this episode as a whole to be like. Holy shit, that was fucking great.
where to even begin for this episode. I like that the opening scene, looking back on it, shows exactly how completely inaccurate um, the American Hero Story show is, and in a way just how inaccurate history can get things, because specifically it just did not understand in the slightest what Hooded Justice was even fighting for or why he was so angry or who he was. I would like to once again pat myself on the back though. I fucking called it that Will was actually Hooded Justice. I mean, technically, <laughs> I was kind of like, uh, maybe he is, I don't really know. But still, I, I was right there, I was right there. But seeing why he took on the, like the noose and the, the hood and everything was really dark. And again, it just paints the character in such a different light than you expected from the comics. Cause I don't think anyone would have anticipated this to be the origin story or the reason Hooded Justice was who he was. And I absolutely love this reimagining of it. I think it's fucking great. Again, really sad that he was lynched and that is why he took on that as his costume. But it also makes perfect sense. Like it really adds so many extra layers to that character. And again, the American Hero story painted him as this really angry person and to me it was kind of implied that he was so angry because he was battling against homophobia when in reality it was a black man being exceptionally angry at the racism and injustice all around him every single day specifically the trauma of the tulsa massacre that has followed him through his whole entire life like seeing the cop car drive away after they you know told them to get in so they could go get drinks or whatever and seeing the two black bodies being dragged behind it that was a really dark but powerful image that i think exemplified exactly where his headspace is at like he cannot escape that trauma it is always haunting him and because of that like his wife said many times you know he's an angry angry man and even after becoming hooded justice it really only made it worse because he got to see more of it up close and actually act on it for once and his own fellow heroes even his lover wouldn't help him like they deemed racism as beneath the problems that they like to deal with wouldn't let him talk about the kkk at the press rally and when he's begging him for help he's like sorry you got to deal with black unrest all on your own which again reiterates what his wife said at the beginning like how can you not be angry with the world that you live in it was a far more powerful episode than i expected it to be far more layers than I expected there to be with Will's backstory, specifically the backstory of Hooded Justice. And it certainly answered the question as to what the strobing light was, and kind of at what the eye is. I'm still a little confused as to whether or not the Cyclops thing has to do with the 7th Cavalry now, but considering their own ties to the KKK and the fact that Judd was apparently a part of that, I would have to assume that it's the same group. I said it during the episode a few times, but I love how unbelievably stylized this whole episode was. A lot of really long one-take shots, or seemingly one-take shots, it was clear to me that a lot of them weren't, but they blended the cuts very, very well. I think one of the best moments of the episode, just in terms of like surrealism, was when he jumped out of the window and everything froze. And you saw Angela under the mask, um, speaking to, or not speaking, but hearing Lori and Cal. I loved how periodically there were times when Angela was in Will's space, sometimes even saying the things that he said. How even though most of the episode was in this very surreal black and white photography there were times where like the color would seep in or certain characters would only be in color it was visually really stunning to look at i also thought it was a pretty crazy twist that 
the baby he picked up uh, right outside of Tulsa was his wife. That took me by surprise, like out of nowhere. I did not expect that one. And it made it extra sad that his own anger drove her and his son away from him. And it makes me worried about Angela's character because it seems like she holds on to the same exact anger that Will has his whole life. I'm hoping she can break free of that, but at the same time, I kind of want her to let it out. Like, it may not be right, but when you're faced with this kind of injustice all the fucking time, even in the Watchmen world where things are dramatically different, how can you not be super pissed off and want to take it out on the people who are hurting others? Like, I don't know, it's a challenging situation <laughs> to navigate. And then they wrapped up the episode with a pretty... I mean, not really a twist, but I suppose a surprising development that she's with Lady True and is now fresh out of her little coma. I don't know exactly how long she was under for, but chances are longer than um, we'd want her to be. Because <laughs> as I've said, I don't trust Lady True at all. To me, she seems like prime villain material, and I'm very nervous that Angela is under her care. And with where they ended that episode, I could not even begin to take a guess at to where the next episode is gonna go. At the end of the last episode, I was like, well, I hope that we get the nostalgia memories and that's exactly what we got. But now after this, I'm like, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> I still don't know exactly what the plan of these villains are. I would assume the hypnotism thing has a major part to play in that. We know the portals have a part to play in that. We also know now likely they're a part of the same Cyclops group. It's just changed into something else. At least I think so. I hope I'm not reading that incorrectly. Ooh, and I just noticed when Hooded Justice is attacking the Klansman, the one who's the cop, he throws him onto a table full of cabbage. I don't know if that was just like a cheeky little throwback or if it was a visual way to say, yes, these people are the same as the cavalry. That, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Cinematography in this episode was hands down the best of the series so far. Again, all the one takes, the extreme surrealism of cutting back and forth to like multiple events happening at once, Angela being in the place of Will. It was so stunning to look at. Like this was definitely, if not the best of the whole season, definitely the best of what I've seen so far. Music in this episode was great because for the most part, it wasn't the typical like Trent Reznor score that we've been used to. It was a lot of period piece music, which again made this episode feel kind of surreal and very different from all the other ones, which I really enjoyed. And then when we caught up to the present with Will killing Judd, or getting him to kill himself, I guess, that's when we get back to the typical score. Like, there were moments where it would show up, but that was really when it came back for us all, and it's so good. It's so cool. Acting-wise, uh, I'll give a, a dual award on this one, because I think Regina King did so good, even in, like, the limited amount of moments you saw her in this episode and obviously i have to give it to i hope i get this name right jovan adipo i don't know if it's jovan adepo or jovan adepo adipo I, I try my best with the names i really do but i get nervous pronouncing them because I, I really hate pronouncing names wrong but he was so good in this episode like again the way he is able to capture the raw anger that's just boiling underneath while still keeping a fairly cool exterior, which doesn't always happen. There are definitely moments where it boils over and when it when it boils over, holy shit. He just played it so well. Like I really, really felt for the character. Editing and pacing was, in my opinion, perfect. Like that was so perfect. To have an entire episode go completely into flashback mode and not even once did I think shit I really want to see like you know what happens in current times like I want to get back to the main story. That's an impressive feat and I think they achieved it by having this all be like a really surreal dream and they did not waste any time either. They only focused on the really important moments of his life that impacted the next moments of his life, and it was just so brilliantly paced. Like, holy shit, dude, this episode was 
fucking great. <laughs> Overall, I'm gonna give this episode, you guessed it, 10 out of 10 because Jesus Christ, that was phenomenal. Brilliant storytelling, brilliant acting, quite a few of my big questions were answered. Not all of them, obviously, I still have plenty for the show. And like many of the episodes so far, it had some very powerful messages to say and some pretty hard pills to swallow. So yeah, I hope I see y'all in the next episode because holy shit, <laughs> the show just gets better and better. I cannot wait. And that's about it. <laughs> Trust her, I just don't trust her. No thanks.